The world around us is made up of many complex adaptive systems. Traffic patterns, for instance, or the stock market. Organic systems, such as the human body, or an ant colony. Social systems, such as whole communities, or even the global spread of terrorism. Understanding how these systems work is obsessing a growing number of scientists. At the University of Warwick, a newly formed research centre aims to lead the field in the study of complexity science. I see complexity science as being the study of systems with many interdependent components. So an example would be a university, but there are also many physical and biological uh, examples. And what is special about systems with many interdependent components? Well, to illustrate that, I want to first talk about ones with few. So, namely, this uh, triple linkage, which has three disks, which are interdependent because they're connected by these rods. And if we give it some initial energy, we'll see what it does. Well, it does apparently complicated behavior. We call it chaotic motion. But I want to argue that this actually is an example of a simple system. Even though the individual trajectory is unpredictable, there is a unique statistical behavior for this system. If we ask ourselves what is the fraction of time that the system spends in every, any given subset of the state space, then this has a well-defined answer regardless of the initial condition. So Robert, as you say, this is a fairly simple model, but in fact you can easily extend this out to something much more complex, for instance, the spread of infection. Yes, indeed. And on my computer here I have a little toy model of a spread of infection where you can infect someone on one side and you, have, and you can recover. And the interesting thing here is that the emergent behaviour is non-unique. So, for example, I might start with a single infected individual and we let it uh, go and the infection propagates, but maybe after a while it dies out. Whereas, perhaps I'll restart, maybe the infection uh, grows and grows and seems to fill the whole region. And uh, this is an example of endemic disease. So the outcome at the large level depends sensitively on the initial condition or the realization. Now, you've described the complexity complex as not a place, it's a, it's a meeting of minds. Who exactly is in that meeting of minds? There are people from many disciplines around the university, notably physics, chemistry, engineering, the manufacturing centre, some association with biological sciences, uh, social science studies and health, and uh, economics, and computer science, and then there's interest from uh, some other departments psychology and uh, statistics is also uh, becoming heavily involved. So it's a big range of people, but, but what's in it for them? What are they going to get out of this? My hope is that uh, one of the main things that will happen is some transfer of ideas and concepts and results. So in one direction, I believe that mathematics already has a lot of results and ideas and concepts that are relevant to complexity science. and but complexity scientists on the whole are unaware of, of this. And so I want to sell mathematics to a whole range of users. But in the other direction, of course, uh, practical problems are what motivate development of new mathematics. So I'm very interested to be exposed to uh, real problems from a variety of disciplines in the university and to uh, think how one could develop some mathematics for them. So this, this emphasis on mathematics, that's presumably what you would point to as, as the groundbreaking aspect of what you're doing here at Warwick. For me, the important thing is to bring mathematics as a key player into complexity science. Some people say that complexity science is hot air, that it, it's pseudoscience, not, not real. How would you counter that argument? I think uh, there's some truth in that. But uh, what we're aiming to do here at Warwick is to put some hard science and mathematics into the subject. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, from my perspective, by making use of a large body of mathematical knowledge and ideas that is already there, it needs adapting to adapt to particular contexts of applications that are different from the toy context of the mathematicians. But I think there's a, a real scope for, for transferring the concepts from mathematics into the 
into complexity science. So how do complexity scientists set about a new project? Different people work in different ways. Uh, I tend to do a lot of reading about a problem uh, or an area and then detect some slot where I can say something based on my background in mathematics and sciences. Uh, but another useful starting point is uh, seminars. For example, we had a sociodynamics seminar for two years in which uh, various people would expose ideas they have about the formation of groups in economic and social settings. And this is a good starting point uh, to get into an area where I wouldn't know where to start otherwise. An important part of the whole venture is the setting up of a doctoral training centre here. Now, how great is the need for a new generation of complexity scientists? I think there is a, an urgent need for complexity scientists in the UK and uh, worldwide. The main thing that keeps coming up is that uh, in, in social policy in particular, but uh, is that uh, someone has a good idea and looks like a good idea, and, uh, and yet the, the feedbacks that are inherent in the system mean that uh, the good idea didn't work out the way that was expected. And what it needs is a generation of people who are aware of the way that complex systems can behave and how, they, how their behaviour depends on policy changes. Your first students are coming autumn next year. Good luck with that. And Robert, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.